Good morning, everyone. This is Leslie Juflis with Trady Live Online. And welcome back to your daily five. And I'd like to thank stockcharts.com for inviting me back. And on this segment, I'm going to do some comparison charts about what I talked about on the last daily five segment, which was on October 20th, where I was seeing divergences, especially in the VIX and patterns in the indexes. And so now we've got some updates with those. So I thought it'd be interesting to do some comparison. And then my last chart today, I'm going to show you the power of coils on an intraday chart with the S&P 500. So let's get started. And what we're looking at here is a comparison chart of when I was on October 20th on the right-hand side of the VIX and then a current chart taken yesterday with the decline in the markets from October 28th. So on October 20th, I had been talking about back in February, and then also currently, we've been seeing divergences in the, DIX, in the VIX where the market has been rising, but the VIX has not been declining. And here on the left-hand side, the current chart of the VIX, we can see this green line here, and we can see where another range formed in there, had a little bit of dip and then a break to the upside from that. And we see a lot of this in price behavior as well. And coils can be very powerful patterns. So now let's go and look at some of the index charts. So on the right hand side is the Dow Jones industrial chart from October 20th from the daily five segment. And on the left is an updated from October 28th. And in the segment from October 20th, I talked about this ABCD pattern and these blue dots here were pointing out some potential support areas that this market could trade to and a break below these lows right here would more than likely bring the index down towards some of these retracement levels using the March low to high. So updating now on the left hand side, we can see that the market did indeed come down to test this lower price range right here. Today we're getting a bit of a bounce up, but we do have a large gap here and a lot of resistance and uh, still some potential more downside to come. If we look at the comparison of the RSI, we can see the RSI back on October 20th was just um, correcting up from this last move to the downside. And it never really got into an extremely bullish um, position. And from there with this last decline, just as the sell pattern started to turn down, the RSI also turned down with it. And we're back to this kind of support area and we may be breaking that, which is a bearish signal for the market. And the on balance volume also starting to turn down. So let's take a look now. Oh, I'd like you to, to notice on that, um, the Dow was all the way down to this level. So let's also look at the NASDAQ. You can see the NASDAQ did not have as steep of a decline as the Dow Jones Industrials. Here back on October 20th, I pointed out a potential A, B, C, D. This would be a buy pattern, and these can extend a bit. We can get another extension down closer to the February 2020 highs. This may, depending on how the prices were to come down here, if they do exceed these lows, um, it would depend on these extensions or maybe even deeper. So we'll just have to monitor that as it goes. But right now where this pink dash line is, that was a support that the market has broken. And now looking at tests back up to this area, we'll have to monitor to see how price reacts at these areas. Again, the RSI, you can see that turned to the downside, and now we're down at the lower end of the range of the RSI. It's going to be important if a rally, if the um, RSI indicator can get above this last high. So right, right now, I, I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but things are looking a little bit more on the downside to me. So here's the S&P 500 E-mini futures, and we've come down to this um, 
786 retracement. This is where we were October 20th, and we've broken this support up here. There was an inverted head and shoulder pattern. And at the time I said, if we come back down and break through this pink center line, then we're most likely gonna have deeper corrections. So we've had this deeper correction now based on this low to this high. So now the question is, are we going to be forming a larger range between this low and this high? I've drawn in this trend line, and this is what I'm going to be watching right now. Any break above this trend line, strong break, is definitely going to be a bullish sign for me. However, if we do break below these lows and start breaking these uh, Fibonacci support levels, then again, you know, it appears more bearish to me. Uh, let's talk about, this is a chart uh, on the title of this program today, The Power of Coils. So I use intraday charts quite a bit um, in my own trading and analysis. And they, they help me to kind of take um, a more uh, introspective view of what's happening with the price levels. And um, a book that I authored with Larry Pesavento uh, that came out in 2007, Trade What You See, How to Profit from Pattern Recognition. The title of Trade What You See is very important to me and how I approach the markets. And what that means is I try and keep a, a neutral a neutral stance on the markets and let patterns and price show me um, with a probability um, of direction where they might be going. But the beauty of coils and learning about coils is that we don't have to really decide direction. We just have to sort of monitor the pattern. So here's a good example of that. So this chart, again, is the intraday S&P 500 uh, chart. And this X here is what I used for this uh, retracement from low to high and then retracement back to this 886 level. Now, the reason I use this X here instead of this one, you can certainly use this and this here, but initially I used this because this is where the market came and tested the previous all-time highs, pulled back, and then started the strong move to the upside. Now we can also use where that breakout level is right here, can also use that for another Fibonacci retracement because that's where a lot of the momentum came into the market. So when we came back below, you can see here, the market tested here and back up, it was not able to make new highs. This is where all these ABCD cell patterns were forming on the daily charts. And then look what it did. It's come back down to that 3,400 level where the previous all-time highs were and the breakout. And it formed an extended coil on this intraday chart. So this gives you a roadmap. You don't need to know which direction it's going to go. You just simply need to monitor it for a break of either you know, up or to the downside. This was an important level to monitor because of this previous breakout level. So once this pattern really coiled up, and in here you can see there are A, B, C, D patterns in here. Here's another one, A, B, C, D. There are patterns that are tradable within these types of a coils, but eventually the price will move away. Um, the center of this coil became very important as the market uh, tested and traded around it many times. And then there was a gap to the downside just below that center area and then a break of that. So that gives the direction out of this type of a coil. These can also have measured moves where you can take the height of the pattern, which is this pink line here, and just project it uh, down for an initial target. Now, they don't always make it to the target, and many times, as we see in this example, it exceeded the target. So we're now at a 786 
retracement level, as I showed you on the uh, current daily chart. And I'm expecting to see um, a uh, retest uh, possibly above the 3300 area. This 3400 level, the previous breakout level, is really going to be a key area to watch. Well, thanks for joining me today. And if you're interested in these types of patterns in this work, please feel free to come visit me at tradinglive.online.com. And I have a new um, set of videos that I did on the history of Fibonacci ratios, harmonics and repetitive swings, and the classic ABCD, Gartley patterns, butterfly pattern, and also three ways to use the three drive pattern and Fibonacci extension. So come check that out. It's right on the homepage. Have a great week, everybody. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.